uh, in within Europe, in different periods how they were writing. It's not consistent. It went into Europe. How they then they start calling this guy as the originator of number system, and that's why they start saying Arabic number. And then there is this Leonardo Fibonacci, who was basically a merchant from Italy, and he was positioned in Africa. And then he realized uh, Indian system is better because it's very easy to <laughs> calculate. Arithmetic is very fast. All other people, when they were counting, they were counting a linear system. I count one, two, three, four. But Indians started thinking about cyclical system, cycle. We can explain using Kannada numerals why 3 is written like this 3. And moreover, you can see 3 and 6, they are related. Okay? And 5 is half of full moon day, 0. Because that is why it is full half reversed. For example, 1 and 2. Okay, 1 and 2 is basically is what you cut 0 into half. The first part is 1, second part is 2. And that is how we write even in Kannada even today. Yeah, thank you, Pragna. So she has introduced me, and I don't. Want, I will not uh, take more time about me. Let Let us start with the uh, topic. Then, if there is anything, we will take it up in the Q and A. Uh, <clears throat> so okay, so my f first uh, talk is um, on the numbers. So numbers, as you know, we are uh, we start from uh, our uh, pre-nursery. So uh, what's big deal? So I will. Uh, we know the numbers. So they are one to nine, zero, everything. There is a history, and that is also told to everybody. But what is not told, why we write, for example, one like, like this, why we write two like this, what is the reason, okay. So this question was uh, not properly answered and this is the slide thrown at people, okay. So the reason is, uh, if you really look at it, there is, uh, for example, three, there, is, there are three angles and so it is uh, three. So three is written because of three angles, nine has uh, nine angles. But uh, just look carefully, is that uh, sense, is that the way we write 9? We don't. So it is just made up just to show that uh, to have a 9 angles. That is not the way it has come. Because if you really see, uh, Indians have invented uh, the numbers. But maths has progressed after numbers. So angle should be coming after numbers. So angle should not be the reason to get uh, mm, uh, the numbers. So these angles are not the answer to the way we get the numbers and uh, this is just thrown at uh, people. So no, nobody asks further questions. Okay. So I am going to talk about it. So I will little bit I will take you through the history because uh, uh, this to set the context because some of the things what I explain later uh, the information is required and then I will purely explain how it has come. Okay. So the numbers, the evidence uh, starts uh, 30,000 years back when uh, uh, we have a bone in uh, Czech Republic where they have 55 tally marks. So we know that is the la uh, oldest uh, evidence we have and uh, ancient civilizations uh, uh, everywhere we find the numbers usage. So obviously you can think about it logically I mean from uh, science how it would have started. So you have 10, 10 fingers, so people start counting with the 10 fingers, identifying each uh, with 1-1 one, one numbers. So people can go up to 10 easily. So this is nothing great invention, it comes as an intuition everybody is followed. So every all religions followed. And uh, there are different ways even people use like horizontally, vertically. So the, the, the representation of hand naturally should have formed into numbers. So. Uh, yeah, so single hand is fine, but uh, if you really see these civilizations, they were uh, using, they were hunter gatherers. So most of the time, they had something in their hand. Okay, so when they have something in their hand, in one hand, they cannot represent all the numbers. They cannot represent all the numbers. When they cannot represent all the numbers, they have to use only one hand. Okay, because we can, this is very, very ancient. We don't know whether language has had originated at the time. 
but something they should be using to identify okay so they could be using sign languages but so they have invented so next level they have invented something like this to indicate all the 10 new numbers through single hand so it's or maybe counting so 1 2 3 4 up to that uh, is possible okay so even this is used even now for counting purpose yeah so we see again uh, like 5000 years uh, the sumerians uh, started uh, uh, recording okay so one is counting but for your uh, practical usage it has to be in a recorded format and uh, what they have done they have used from single handed instead of using a uh, finger they started using the uh, ribs okay whatever the small small things are there segments so these segments they have they can count up to 12 okay so 12 and one hand and another we have 5 so then from this way they can go up to 60 from 10 to 60 and uh, what we see in the recording format also they have not complicated things they have been used only simple very simple symbol one symbol for example one is uh, something like a one bud okay a flower bud and then you multiply it so you want to write two then you write two times three times four times five times and uh, you know when they go up to 10 okay because still people were using 10 because of the 10 fingers they have given a new symbol because from 10 there was a big block I mean to go further so that's where they have the same uh, they they did they doesn't go to counting of 12 they still use 10 but they use this mechanism so we know up to 60 it's called sexagesimal system it's a sumerian invention and then for recording purpose so some material is required so bone was used first then uh, we see on caves people are writing this counting system so there was no number they were still using the symbolic representation and uh, on the uh, sumerian tablets mud tablets we can see those very clearly the same pattern of numbers they are not complicated simple and then we see next uh, romans using wood and they were using numbers in a one uh, counter kind of thing and then they were uh, attaching counters together to derive a number okay so before we understand anything we need to go very go back to the very ancient uh, times and what we see is as you know what are the ancient uh, civilizations that were available one was uh, from uh, 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 this sumerians another one uh, we can see from uh, uh, egypt Another one uh, we can also consider Chinese and uh, in South America we can see Mayans. So these are pretty old we know some of the dates. So we need to look from everybody how they is there a pattern in their thinking or logic how they have come to their numbers because these were probably very ancient because to when you have killed an animal to count the number of animals you have killed. So you need a some counting. So everybody need not have to wait for some invention to have somewhere. So they would have gone ahead independently. So we see that pattern. So for example, in uh, you see here uh, again 1, 2, 3, 4 similar simple number system uh, lines and then again you see 10 they are giving a symbol and then they are jumping. So they were uh, combining 10 because after one round of uh, fingers are over they are again repeating. So same thing in uh, Greek, the Greek uh, inherited from uh, uh, Egypt. So there you can see 1, 2 and 3, 4 everything is written. So there is another invention probably they have done to cut down 5, 6, 7 and 8, 9 writing more more uh, uh, lines. So they have cut down. So there is a one jump. And then uh, Chinese uh, as you know they, are, they, are, they prefer to give one symbol for everything. So again here what we see is again they are writing. 1, 2, 3 are again with uh, lines but then from 4 onwards they start giving a different uh, different symbols. Here uh, uh, Sumerians uh, I, I told you like they, they have only two symbols and then uh, next level we comes to Romans and uh, Romans inherits from uh, Greek and uh, they have 1, 5, 10, then 50, 100. So 
similar so some 5 6 uh, digits 5 6 uh, notations and combinations of that so it was simple civilization and we can know we know uh, till they are using all these things their civilization is also very simple it was not complicated so we cannot bring in any new or different kind of technology because this acts as a poison pill because suddenly when uh, we know when still they were using we start talking about uh, very complicated angles then they were talking about uh, if they are talking about um, some solar system it's not possible because if they cannot even break this simple calculation or arithmetic they cannot go to that higher level so there's a logic we can derive <coughs> So Mayans again uh, what we see is uh, again see uh, okay zero is in this picture they have added. So here again you see they are basically again fingers. So instead of finger they are putting on dot. So when you have four fingers they are representing through four dots and then five one hand they are making a line and so it continues up to digit 20. Uh, so nothing great everybody is following a similar structure similar pattern so what is missing here till now india is missing of all the civilization india is missing so these people are thinking in one direction and what what was india thinking at for this perspective so that's where we need to see so all these people you see they are all small societies very few people fewer needs Numbers needed were small, the calculations needed were simple. As long as women remain uh, primitive, uh, they can manage with this. So, I mean, at a time probably nobody kills 60 animals may not be required. So, 60 itself they can do with the most of the transaction day to day activities. They do not talk about any big numbers beyond this. Okay, so we come to India. Now, what is happening in India? So, we know. Europeans now what the history tells us is this is the number European numbers and then uh, they say this is Arabic numbers from Arabic numbers we got into European numbers and if you really see there is there are two versions in Arabic okay and then uh, they map it to our Devanagari and another example in Tamil we see a different notations altogether. So in India it is not like the other civilizations it is not one single format already we see Tamil different Devanagari different and uh, we don't know why same numbers are not used in Arabic so we say it's Hindu Arabic then why they are using different notations here okay so but what the history tells is it is derived from India so and uh, uh, of all the civilization Indian numbers were superior so it was adopted and that is there ends the story of history of numbers ok. And why do we need to bother about it? Why not we buy it? Why not we stop and buy this argument and close the chapter? See it is not the question of numbers alone. Today the whole maths is used to explain science ok. So uh, the whole very big big things are modeled on mathematics and through maths we are explaining. And what is the foundation of maths? Numbers. So, if we do not even understand the numbers, what are we trying to do? We do not understand the foundation, but we are explaining uh, the top floor. And uh, second thing, <coughs> we these numbers are very, very primitive. They are coming from very, very early phases. And uh, it, if we start thinking why they have come, how they have come, then we know what is their thought process and is there a problem? How, why did they arrive at this solution? and uh, why and uh, see the all all over world all civilization indian numbers have become um, uh, very uh, very good so how it has become very good things will not become very good suddenly so there must be some cycles where you have done something wrong and then you improve and then you come out come to some num some system because this is what we are talking about is basically a very uh, sophisticated thing so, what process is involved? What, uh, what are the cycles they have undergone? Why they came to this system? Because you saw already Sumerians were op have optimized to go for simple, very simple, just two symbols, 1 and 10, that is all, nothing else. It is already a very simple system. When things are very simple, why do we need to go for uh, writing 10 uh, uh, digits, 10 different symbols? 
because there is another simple system why do we need to go for this so all these questions we need to ask because it is going to unravel our culture our history our problems and uh, uh, because th this is the very uh, india was the only country which was thinking differently from all other civilizations that is what we need to understand because why india took the leadership position okay so what were we doing differently and uh, that's what uh, once we understand all these background factors then probably we can see uh, because history repeats itself or if you want to do that same algorithm or analogy we can think about it okay so do we have some strength here so these are the questions that is why we need to study this factor and we need to explain it and there should be a motivation because there is a learning here for our kids and uh, it also because this is one of the factor very big numbers are very very big because if numbers were not invented or not like this then probably we will be still uh, using the romans and we are simply doing arithmetic not going anywhere <laughs> so this is a very big contribution and uh, something to be feel proud of so if if the whole world doesn't care about the history further we indians has to understand and we should be uh, able to answer it because if tomorrow some can somebody can ask it okay okay so from uh, where did it all start so the earliest evidence what we have is our vedas so let us start looking in the vedas what the vedas do they do they have numbers what numbers they have so if i look at it for example rigveda 7 they clearly says ekam and uh, vimshatim so vimshati means 20 1 and 20 so 20 had a different uh, already a uh, number one is different what are those number whatever they have defined we are still following it so in rigveda itself whatever was invented we are following the same number we have not changed the definition of the digits the name nomenclature of the digits uh, so by this time whatever is the rigvedic time i don't want to uh, argue on what is the rigvedic time but rigvedic time already our number system had evolved okay and uh, we can see so many examples uh, like dasha is already there so we use the same number system and i am giving all the uh, uh, for example i am giving all the quotations where references so anybody can go and check they are there and then here rigvedic numbers for example uh, like 300 okay so this 300 number when we see 300 we already know they were also using decimal system already okay 3 into 100 and then we see some 63 defining the maruts so up to 100 1 to 100 it was counting up to 10 and then up to 100 the way we are using was already present in the rigveda this is the proof so when we are going to go back in the history we know all by rigveda already all these things are already existing then interesting thing 33 repeats many times what is 33 so at, in rigvedic times 33 was the god uh, okay they in rigveda what they say is brahma is the god and then they invent some uh, demigod or uh, to assist him they invent 33 gods okay so this 33 gods is basically 12 adityas basically they are uh, the versions of uh, sun and then 11 rudras two ashwins and then eight vasus so this is very clear 33 how it is coming and then uh, they also for rigvedic uh, reference uh, 214 says 100 castles destroyed okay so 100 castles means 100 cities so that was already a very big battle to destroy 100 cities indra destroys that at various places same things repeats and interestingly at rigveda times we cross 100 all the other religions were using 60 50 100 and we talk about 100,000, we talk about uh, 60,000. So these are very big numbers in Rigvedic times. And uh, also look at it, 100,000 people killed by Indra. It's very difficult to imagine also. 100,000 people killing means it's a huge battle. Uh, even uh, exaggerated also, uh, for example, 500 people killed, it should be 5,000, not 1 lakh. Okay, so they could think at to that higher level that's all it shows and then uh, yeah there are for example uh, Im important things like uh, uh, yeah one lakh one lakh is coming here 
and uh, I think next slide I have some more interesting thing. Here they say we know 10 clearly because uh, uh, the battle of 10 kings that is uh, Dasharatha Yagna that is what it is called that is very famous in Rigveda and uh, there the 10 comes and then 1000 pillar hall they refer. 1000 pillar hall is very big is what we are talking about. So, uh, the way the western people give us a picture like Rigvedic people were uh, living in huts. Then why thousand pillar hall is coming? Has only five six. Huh? Has only five six. <laughs> Whatever it is, thousand. They can you forget about whether they had or not. They were able to think that itself is a very big matter. Thousand pillar hall, and then again, the this uh, this sloka says hundred old ship. Okay, hundred old ship means hundred people has to be uh, rowing the boat. Boat. What is the size of the boat? Okay, so. The way the picture western have given us the picture is totally different than what is existing in the Rugveda. Okay. Forget about uh, now all those things, but we need to look at these numbers. Uh, all numbers are defined in Veda itself. And then uh, we have, it is not just in Rigveda, we have Yajurveda. And in Yajurveda we have Sri Rudram, it is very popular and uh, that comes in uh, Krishna Yajurveda, Taitariya Samhita. It has two parts. Uh, Rudra and Chamaka. So, Rudra talks about uh, the uh, uh, Lord Rudra and uh, basically his uh, names to pray for him and then uh, Chamaka is basically requesting to fulfill wishes. Okay? So, these are the two things, they are uh, 4.5 and 4.7. At the end of it we see this is the sloka and where they say very surprising, they only pray for numbers and uh, the numbers are in this order 1, 3, 5, 7, they are all completely odd number series and then they start with even number 4, 8, 12, numbers are missing, we do not know what it is and people, uh, def uh, there are various interpretations uh, in uh, many, many um, uh, uh, this uh, Vedic interpretations lot of authors have given and they tell what means one for example when it 11 comes it's 11 rudras all these things they give but we don't know exactly okay because only numbers are given okay and why this sequence okay one is odd numbers we understand but even is not it's not even series because it doesn't starts from 2 6 is not there okay so it's not really a correct series but it goes up to 48 okay but we know we can these are all multiples of 4 these are all multiples of 4, but why? Why 4? Okay. And then uh, when the odd numbers are given immediately following that why the followed by 4 series. But the important thing is at Vedic times they also knew this series. That is what is important. Now nobody highlights all these things. Okay. Then next comes in uh, Shukla Ejurveda 17.2. And uh, here, this is I have. Uh, this is a translation. Basically, this is in Hindi, not in uh, Devanagari. This is the, but uh, what they talk about is power of ten. They go up to ten to the power of twelve. We are talking about very very big number. Okay, why they went for these numbers? What is the requirement? And why Indians face this requirement that was not existing any any other religion? This is something we need to see. This is some trigger points we need to question. Okay, when we start questioning. You may give uh, one person may give one answer, another person may give another answer, another person may give another answer. Then we need to see the points and try to fit in what is the best logic. Okay. And uh, then uh, comes the famous uh, Bruhadaranya Kaupanishad. Uh, this is Purnamada Purnamidam Shloka. And uh, this shloka, what it brings, it does not specify infinity, but at the end, what it says, you have some quantity, you go on removing things but the quantity remains. Okay. So, if the quantity has to remain, it means it is infinity. Otherwise, something I remove, for example, I have 10 liters of water, I remove 1 liter of water, then it should become 9, reduced quantity. They are talking about non-reduced quantity. Of course, they are talking about uh, concept of God here. So, God is infinite. So, that is what the idea is. So, God is full, you remove anything from him, still full God. Okay, because if God reduces any, for example, I remove some 1% of power, will God become 99%? 
then it is not idealistic okay so these arguments were happening and they were thinking about god must be idealistic so it must be full even if i remove something he must be full for example we have krishna he was uh, reincarnation born so does 5% uh, uh, god was in on earth so uh, was the god 95% uh, there it cannot be because he has to be 90 full 100% if that is 100% and then what is this 5% so this ideological problem comes then how do they explain so that is where comes the inf question of uh, uh, definition of infinity why they were going to big numbers is also we see clearly in hinduism first because this level of deep uh, thoughts were discussions were happening okay so and uh, this infinity was not coming from number perspective but from uh, uh, from uh, god's discussions or whatever they were trying to define then comes uh, our uh, uh, jains buddhist they wanted to define uh, we are not less okay so they, they again uh, the god has to be infinite so then uh, to explain what is infinite it's very difficult because uh, again uh, what is the number what will be equal what is uh, you can you give because people cannot comprehend we know infinity today because we study maths but these are primitive people how do you explain infinity okay so god they could understand probably but what is infinity so they wanted to give an approximation by saying big number what is that big number then some if you define some number you will become encapsulated or you will be bordered into that they don't want that <laughs> again next guy comes and defines even higher number then even higher number so that's way they started defining numbers and first the way they could define is give a name for a number bigger number and then what it is is explained in uh, shlokas 10 to the power 54 10 to the power of 12 10 to the power of 24 something like that and they have uh, three concepts one is countable another is countable but infinite and then endless and non-countable endless and non-countable refers to our infinity concept of infinity and then uh, countable but infinite is some concept like for example like like rama he was an incarnation but he died okay so it's something like that it is that it has a uh, some purpose but it's big but has some purpose and uh, where is it coming the references so the references i am giving uh, uh, this is explained in a book the same thing so in buddhist lalita vistara they define as i explained you they were going to 10 to the power of 53 and this is i already explained in our yajur uh, veda uh, they were going up to 10 to the power of 12 and then it was extended to 10 to the power of 19 they were broadening the numbers and then comes uh, um, a concept of yuga concept again they started defining as i said uh, okay limitation the so what number so you need to define so they were all very big numbers so the big numbers comes not because of your day to day transaction okay but because because of this religious discussion there is no practical uh, usage otherwise because they couldn't able to map it or identify with any a specific uh, item materialistic items okay so what is the this is little bit of history but what is the features of indian number okay one is we see decimal system and second is is very very important that is place holder system this is where our indian system and all other cultural whatever they followed they also followed decimal system i showed you because decimal system comes because of our 10 fingers but uh, placeholder system is very unique it comes from india okay so that is what we i am going to explain why we came to this placeholder system because numbers is not the biggest uh, contribution from hindi india this placeholder system means this is unit this is 10 this is 100 so that is something out of the box thinking and then uh, it is simplest form of writing again not why i mean if you ask some uh, artist they will give you different different uh, they can give you fantastic beautiful pictures why they are not used because for number rep reputation doing very quick transactions it has to be very simple so uh, with our number system is very efficient and effective also 
and that is why it was adopted all over the world without questions because today you just think about it i say something it is very difficult to convince people and uh, propagating our number system in that in those old ages and why would the others buy it okay unless otherwise there is a huge benefit then people will adopt it because otherwise uh, there is a penalty if you don't use it there is a penalty so they will obviously come to this so that is the meaning of effective and efficient when your system when your things are very effective and efficient that is uh, something like uh, we have in maths the concept called global minimum and global maximum so global minimum is the very minimum point optimal point so this is the optimal point that is why everybody adopted it another important question comes here okay the number system are effective and efficient but why do we need to use indian numbers they had their own notations okay why not use it what is the problem what is the problem uh, i mean we need to see that okay i am adapting the, the the because people are already used to some writing for example i write in tamil okay when i want to write uh, something i can write in tamil letters because you see when people want to type in now in uh, whatever mobile they prefer to use their language same thing you type in uh, english for example english typing is easy typewriter the facilities are easy you type your language in using english alphabets that's what many many times they do so here also we should logically expect those people should be using their own notations and not indian notations but that is not the way we see today we see they have adopted indian system only so there must be some strong reason to adopt these numbers the way it is written and it's very huge a lot of years okay lot of since lot of years we are using it no more innovation because that is the best that's all that's the answer okay so this is the i am coming up answers because uh, this is again my questions so i have to find out some answer whatever answers i found i am trying to explain here and uh, so this uh, slide the data is coming from uh, in karnataka we have something called karnataka itihasa academy they are basically an organization of historians and what they have done they have published lot of things of uh, inscriptions and uh, how the letters have uh, moved from one one age to another age similarly they have published for numbers also data they published nobody analyzed so here i am presenting it i will explain so here is our english numerals english numerals the second column shows 3rd bc this is how ashoka has used in his inscriptions okay so basically this explains the history how the numbers evolved within india okay this is the data then this is third one is shatavahana period and this is the numbers we can see in the inscription at second century okay these are the dates which our current history has accepted okay so that dates uh, we will not get into the discussion but let us take it for right now these are the dates then we have kadamba period then we have uh, chalukya period then we have rashtrakuta period then we have uh, kalyana chalukya period then we have hoysala period at 12 ad then vijayanagara period then uh, mysore very recent 18th century ad and then we see today how it is written in kannada okay because <coughs> here i see nearly 3rd century bc and 21st ad okay third cent that's nearly about more than 2000 years okay and uh, just look at the number 1 nothing has changed okay and we write in kannada exactly like it was 2000 years back okay and uh, only in kannada we write like this now again in within india people don't follow this numerals and telugu also telugu similar telugu is basically a branch of of kannada so some numerals are same but closest or ancient to karnataka is basically usually karnataka things are compared with tamil nadu tamil nadu we have a totally different uh, numbers followed so but only in kannada we have this numbers this is one set of data okay i will come back to this slide later then i have this slide okay so when i was looking at it there was one uh, book in kannada and that is 
uh, uh, called uh, Siri Bhu Valaya. That's a book. Uh, it's 50 years back. Uh, it's published. There's a lot of controversy on the book. Okay. So what is that book? Basically, it's a Jain book, and they have written the whole book in numbers. There is no letters. Okay. The stories are written in numbers. It's the maybe in the world is the only book where they have used numbers to express what, solve. What they mean, sir? Uh, there is, I will tell you maybe, I will deviate, it will deviate uh, and not every pages are found and some pages are found, there is a lot of uh, discussion at uh, very top level also to research on this, uh, all these things, but it is controversial, let us not go into that, but in that book, they have published this, okay, the Kannada numbers. This number, the way it is published on top was not there in any of the Mm, earlier the columns I showed 2000 plus history also this is not there okay and these people the Siribu Walaya book is called is the again Jains and they try to give very 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 old dates claims it's claims so we don't know and uh, uh, the thing is this uh, book you can read it in different ways because it is like a, a matrix and you can read in columns you can read in rows the book itself claims you, you can uh, that book uh, you can interpret in 33 or maybe 100 languages. So one you can read like a Kannada, another row if you read it will become like Sanskrit text. Okay, something like that. And uh, there is a you will get it into a sequence and then sequence you need to interpret. Okay, so but important is this. Okay, we need to understand how each and every number it is written here. Okay, the first. Is, is in Canada. what it says is Kuilu. Kuilu means uh, um, the correct, the today what Kuilu is explained is basically when you cut your uh, crop, okay, that is Kuilu, beginning, okay. So, Kuilu means beginning and then uh, we have numbers, the lo second row is expressed in our uh, existing fashion. So, again you see they are all very, very closely matching, okay, closely matching. And then below we have the numbers. This is the numbers which has been uh, derived from Bakshali script in Northern India. And uh, there is a beautiful video from Oxford and it is ascribed to 4th to 5th century. Okay. So here also you can see one is matching with Kannada one. This is in North India. Okay. This is Karnataka. You can see three. Okay. Three and three. And then uh, you can see for example, uh, uh, zero they are representing like this. Some other numbers they have changed. Okay, but the thing is, this is another set of data. Now we need to connect the dots. Okay, in Karnat in Canada, why they were using this? See, the question is very primitive. Why this the two is written like this? Why three is written like this? Because today our new number English number three has come very very similar. So, if we go through these numbers, we may not able to go back to the origin. Origin. So, it has these numbers have transformed over a period of time. So, this is the earlier earliest reference we are getting. Again, similarity in the way it is used in Karnataka. So, we let us look at the logic why we have come to this number. Then we can see whether there is a link with uh, the Kannada numerals and then whether we can uh, even relatively because the dots connect whether we can say probably it has originated from Karnataka. Okay. So, that is my argument, but these are the evidences and then I will explain the logic. Next slides I will explain the logic. So, I asked the first question why India was thinking differently, why all others, all other civilizations they were similar fashion of uh, coming to the numbers, India was the only one which is coming differently. See, this is where it explains our culture, our uh, civilization, everything. All other, normally all other cultures were hunter gatherers, very uh, natural, you are in, uh, in a forest, hunt for an animal, kill it, eat it, over, your problem is solved. But India, they started thinking differently, they went for agriculture, they thought, okay, hunting gathering is anyway risky, why kill an animal, if you can grow and eat on, on uh, agriculture. Let us farm. So, they settled and uh, found uh, better food security with that and uh, because of that the culture flourished that is where you started making the cities all these things we can explain. 
okay so when you are hunter gatherer you are you are bothered about only your family so and also there are fights so today i got a kill but my neighbor didn't get a kill then if for his food he will fight with you he may steal from you so it's all individualistic so there is no question of coming together or making a very big society collaboration cooperation all these things won't come but when you comes to uh, our agriculture the dimension changes because you cannot go and fight for example i have to clear the forest to get the land to cultivate i cannot cultivate alone i need people support so people has to come together they have that's why they are, they are becoming societies and then cities everything so what is the problem so we need to look at the problem then we can if we understand problem correctly then the solution is very easy to explain or to come to the solution is also very easy so what was their problem you want to do farming what is their problem they make uh, some uh, village and the easiest thing uh, what you can think of is uh, water is required for agriculture where will you get the water you will get the water near a uh, stream or a river so you make your habitation closer to your river and when you have habitation closer to river what is the problem the problem there at that time was floods okay so you don't know you have cultivated you have put lot of effort suddenly flood comes everything is gone then again you have to go back to your hunter gatherer <laughs> or you don't know what is the alternate so floods was very very uh, troublesome for them and second is again some flood this flood uh, did not come but there is a uh, water shortage then what then you, you are depending on rains because again although you are close to a river your farm uh, who will bring the water okay it was there was no channel concept or draw extensive irrigation uh, projects to take uh, water to all your irrigating lands so that is not there so then uh, how will you get water so problem is rain so rain and uh, our uh, floods so these two are major problem and when you repeatedly hit then what will you do you will start thinking about how do i manage it okay how will you manage it then they started observing the data they realized floods and rains are repetitive okay so when when will you get the floods because all these people when they settled they were settling uh, in uh, our punjab haryana area and uh, rivers they were banking on was uh snow fed rivers snows coming from himalayas in summer your snow melts suddenly you find uh, uh, floods in your locality okay and so, so uh, melting of snow is again repetitive because in summer you sun snow melts you get the flood so then they started guys started realizing okay okay now i understand it comes after some time what is that some time i don't know because i have no calendar system i have no counting system i don't know i cannot benchmark uh, one year or one month all these things but very simple they realize okay last something some time back this happened and again some time back for example maybe you have three kids in your family when they were born first kid when he was born a flood hit then second kid was born again flood hit third kid when he was born there was no problem <laughs> you can easily remember and these kids are born in a some uh, periodic uh, period so you know very easy to find out that it is cyclical now then they start thinking when my third kid was hit i was fine why i was fine what was the reason why flood did not come but first two kids there was problem so they realize it is cyclic all other civilizations they did, they there was this problem never existed because it was not their uh, area it was not the way there was not their direction so agriculture is the main root problem and uh, to address that root problem they started uh, looking out looking out for a solution and uh, when you start looking out for a solution something they found okay so what what they found and these people were not uh, dumb people like uh, this is one representation of harappa city is very very big okay very big and you can see it's very close to river when the flood it comes your city is flooded it's a huge problem and then uh, you can see it's a multi story structure very well organized just think about it because flooring and uh, your roof is not so easy because when the water heavy water, rains comes how the seepages are managed why will they go for this kind of uh, roof okay 
they are sophisticated you, you start thinking i mean how they arrived even all these things are also pro, uh, questions because you invest uh, you have snow rains they go for uh, is slanted roofs but here they have gone for uh, our uh, normal today's the way we have our roofs and uh, so they are they are already sophisticated they have uh, made so much of system and out of this so much of so much of system uh, they have evolved all these things for example a standard weights all all these things so this is where it comes all other people when they were counting they were counting a linear system i count 1 2 3 4 number of animals killed but indians started thinking about cyclical system cycle when you get into a cycle repetition and that is where all things starts differing that's why india was different and that's why our number system what we gave is also different so what they did for example here you start uh, you to identify your floods the easy thing they were started counting on moon moon is uh, easy is visible and that is also cyclical okay so they were trying to benchmark with is there anything related with moon we know now it is snow fed river and snow melts and it uh, we are hit but at that time it was not snow fed they have to uh, they were thinking celestial bodies is there any link so first they started counting the moon then they started counting sun okay so you see here we have uh, the names of all the days and and then uh, if i start uh, for the whole month if i pictureize it today is easy to pictureize the faces of moon i get this picture so here there is a calendar of the entire year how the moon is mapped what is the faces of moon and uh, how we write uh, in our traditional system and do we need uh, for example for this moon to count this moon do we need uh, individual symbols no because 15 days after 15 days the moon repeats and here you see the 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 black portion totally becomes uh, reversed in a uh, shukla paksha and krishna paksha means uh, moon is growing and moon is coming back okay so you don't need uh, different different uh, notations what you need is basically there is a count of 14 because for 14 faces of moon plus you have one full moon day and one uh, no moon day so there are 16 items and then you need shukla paksha and krishna paksha you need some differentiator because here the way we write is bhadra pada shukla chauti so chauti is used in both shukla paksha and krishna paksha chauti number is same but then differentiator is shukla and then uh, for example deepavali is on kartika amavasya kartika denotes the month amavasya denotes whatever no monday so how this people went you just look at it see how is the full moon full moon is this okay and then krishna symbol is a dot okay they have just used it so how you write it 14 is basically they were counting the years from their ray, king or whoever for example my son is born i starts counting from that um, son's uh, date of birth and uh, that year is what they were writing and then maga and then a dot or this symbol and then you write four so this is the notation which will explain this thing in a shorter form okay then what we see is there are two another two concepts one is kumbha and uh, uh, zero see zero is also we have understood very very wrongly the the way we learn in our maths it's different so what is kumbha kumbha has a very significance in our religion we all know it's uh, used in uh, um uh, temples your houses everywhere so basically when you are filling earlier the merchants or whoever is bringing what they were doing they were trying to transfer it into pots or wherever storage format and then once the one pot is filled that is kumbha okay so if you really see there were like this bigger pots and smaller pots to transfer okay there were bigger and smaller if you go to village side in fact i have experienced it when i was small guy but even if you can go to villages you see that the way they they don't use your uh, weighing scale they use this uh, this kind of utensil that's basically called liter for our uh, oil but they use it for measuring uh, solid items also and what they say is when they count 
they count starts up to 10, at 10 they say kumba and then what they do is they count only the kumba. The problem reduces from counting instead of 100, it reduces to 10. If you count 10 kumbas, it is equivalent to 100. So, it is basically reduction of complexity. So, that is traditionally followed, even at villages people follow it. So, why I am saying this kumba? Because this kumba explains our decimal system, our uh, 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 place, placing uh, units, tens, these place, places are there, no? That is what it explains. So, when uh, you finish filling uh, 1, that is unit, then when it becomes kumba, kumbas are basically represented in the second place. That is where you jump from 1 to 10. So, 10, 10 to 100, maybe uh, 10 kumbas, you put it in one cart, you count the carts, that is the third place. So, that is how we get into 100, decimal, 100, tens, units like that. And then again 0. So, the problem is, what is problem with 0? Actually, there are two zero in the way Indians were th thought at that time are two. One is 0 behind the, uh, the number 1, that is the beginning, 0, 1, okay. Then the number what we raise next to 10, 1 next to 0, that is 10, that is Kumba. And the beginning 0 is represented with uh, our, this dot, not 0. This 0 is used because of Kumba. That is full moon, full moon is basically a kumba and then this beginning is dot because we were, they were counting from Amavasya. So, Amavasya was the beginning and to represent Amavasya is this. So, it is very intuitive, very natural. Then, uh, yeah, so this is what already I explained, I skipped this. So, there is another problem. See, all these people when you, when the other civilization, they were thinking uh, a number line, what is zero? Somewhere it has to begin, where is beginning and if you start 0, then again people can ask before 0 what, what, what was it. For example, I say from uh, when my child was born is 0, before that what was there. So, already your negative number starts coming and it is very complex. But Indians, they went for cyclical and once you say this is the center is the beginning, you do not, I mean complexity do not come, what is behind that? You are getting. So, this I say this is dot, this is uh, dot and then there is a cycle, cycles and cycles. So, only positive numbers, you think only about positive numbers. This is basically an abstraction. So, yeah, this is the, I will briefly explain uh, the history. So, uh, there is a guy called uh, Al Khwarizmi, he was a Arab, Arab guy who has translated our number system and there is the, he, he, uh, the way we write. 0, places of 10, places of 100, these are all basically is called algorithm. Algorithm word comes from this al Khwarizmi. okay. So, and then there is a uh, description how we translated into Europe, how it went into Europe, how they, then they start calling this guy as the originator of number system and that is why they start saying Arabic number. And then there is this Leonardo Fibonacci who was basically a merchant from Italy and he was positioned in Africa and then he realized uh, Indian system is better because it is very easy to <laughs> calculate, arithmetic is very fast. So, uh, the Roman numbers are not so good. So, then he realized uh, because of the efficiency factor we should start adapting to that and people start adapting it. And there is a Hindu article, paper article by um, CK Raju. And he has explained it beautifully all these things, uh, this you can go through. Okay, so, this is the numbers evolution from uh, Brahmi to Indian to Sanskrit to all these things. So, again you see there is no similar number similarly copied, okay. They were confused, totally confused, they do not know how to write, why to write, because this logic is not known to anybody. So, they know these numbers are very efficient, very good. And even people were so, uh, they were thinking there is some magic behind it. So, they should represent, write it properly. For example, now you write a uh, OM symbol or swastik. Can I write uh, right swastik or left, left swastik? Which is correct? If I write wrongly, what will happen? So, all these problems are there. So, they were also… Swastik was Nazis in Germany. Uh, whatever. <laughs> but the thing is, the, there is a fear factor of not writing it properly because when you associate some mystery to these numbers, this problem comes. Uh, so, again 0, they had a problem because they were not understanding, they heard stories of beginning Amavasya and all, they were very hesitant to use it. 
so Europeans were ready to use other numbers but not zero they first adopted all the numbers but not zero because they don't know what it is and this magic of add uh, 10 so if you add one uh, next to one uh, te 10 is one plus next to that you write zero then if I write simply another zero it becomes 100 value is uh, raised by 10 times why it will happen like that so they were not able to understand all this logic they were confused and uh, again they invented uh, um, this abacus abacus is basically a method for uh, roman things you don't need this abacus to for man using uh, indian numbers and calculate but he was they were trying so so many things see all these things uh, again there is another book where they have written how within uh, in within europe different periods how they were writing it's not consistent so they were writing some numbers from uh, arabic then somebody came to india and they said that is not the way indians write then the right way is this so they started changing it some places they start changing it but some people continue it with world style so totally we can see full uh, not they, they, they were it's clear they were not able to understand it and they were very fearful to use it it took nearly five centuries for them to realize okay there is benefit this is the way to use it let us use it there is no problem numbers there is no mystery behind it we can use it for normal transaction so these are the notations so we there are so many notations for a single number you can see for everything there is no there is no consistency and uh, so as i said the first another question i asked why we should write three like this only they were not also sure they were writing in different different patterns but they know it is not correct they fall back to indians and you can see zero you can see this i showed you that uh, the way our kannada number will started with the kum, uh, kuilu the beginning so this is the same thing they were using for zero okay they were confused so they even today europe has confused that's why we write beginning of beginning zero and the decimal zero same zero because they don't they didn't understand the concept of amavasya and uh, mm, full moon so uh, that notations they have confused so you can see here the numbers they have used but not zero zero was empty okay <laughs> they were hesitant to use numbers okay so i have written a little bit more in detail so the my argument is finally concluding argument is this we see in Kannada numerals, so I will go back to that slide uh, uh, just a minute to conclude our Kannada numerals. So here all the numerals what you see is basically a combination of the moon. The how you write first day of moon basically this, this one. Okay? So if you really go back, so here what you are doing, you are, you are showing increasing phases of moon, first day, second day, third day. Okay? So this is the way, so the moon of moon is this is how it is represented and they were writing like this for full five, four five six but then it is very difficult to represent so they optimized and when they optimized they optimized using the same curves to represent all the numbers okay so we see we can explain using Kannada numerals why three is written like this three and moreover you can see three and six they are related okay and five is half of full moon day zero because that is why it is full half reversed. So, so we can explain why 5 is written like this, 6 is written like this, 7 is written like this. They were using, uh, instead of complicating, they were using the symbol of 1. For example, 1 and 2. Okay, 1 and 2 is basically is what? You cut 0 into half. The first part is 1, second part is 2. And that is how we write even in Kannada even today. Okay. So, using Kannada numerals, I can explain why the numbers are written and how it has come. So, now I can have one uh, answer, a better answer than the first picture I showed the number of angles. So, how Indians have come? Indians have come with logic, with reason. It is not some random number, suddenly it has popped up, not some numerology. Uh, at that time, something suddenly somebody said, uh, let us use this. No, it is not like that. There is a reason behind why they have come and they have come to this conclusion very uh, that's why it is effective efficient and how we came to the decimal places so all the advantages of our indian system i can see all the proofs here for everything decimal system zero how we write why we write beginning zero number dot everything we can explain so this is a, one of the explanation i saw this is missing in our history 
and I can correlate it. I can see that it is still used in Karnataka. So, probably it should have originated from Karnataka. So, that is where I conclude my uh, argument. Thank you. Now, we should start increasingly using the word Hindu rather than Indian because Indian inc includes much more now. So, therefore, the origin uh, of all these things have a Hindu origin. They are not Indian origin. Indian is only territorial, but Hindu is much more than uh, Hindu. Uh, in, uh, so, therefore, it would be appropriate if we start consciously using Hindu in place of Indian when we are talking of these things. Okay. This is one, is an observation. Okay, sure, sure. Here. The second one is, the notations are representation of numbers as close connection with the development of the script. So, what you have explained may be true, but then uh, various uh, scripts, most of the scripts have come out of uh, Brahmi and then. So, therefore, whether this would really explain how the numbers were visualized, whether, and whether... Uh, if that is that happened only, let's say in Kannada, Telugu, or that region, what uh, what about the North Indian, Eastern Indian? So whether this two, this gives a complete picture or it only gives one aspect of the total picture. Okay, I, I can answer that. Yeah. yeah. Then the third, the third one is the cyclical nature that you have explained, but that cyclical nature has been there in every civilization throughout the world. Why is it that only because of the cyclical nature we have come out with this kind of thing? That doesn't explain much of the. There is much more than the cyclical nature of the Adi. So how Hindus have visualized the cyclical nature, it is not just from floods or from rains or from these kind of things. Is there something much more? Because this is uh, at a very, very, uh, don't uh, take offense, at a primitive level explanation. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, I will answer that. See, the uh, first of all, uh, this, uh, the whole, uh, outside world they were using in their history books school books also arabic numerals there was no hindu indian connection at all okay so it is not question of for example we have a lot of things in history now we are unable to convince our government to correct it okay but here we are this was included including uh, foreign governments it is even more difficult to convince them but then when things started coming out okay then they realized uh, because there was awareness among the public then they cannot uh, go on uh, giving a different explanation. Now, more or less all over the world, it is written as Hindu Arabic. So, Hindu has come because of awareness among public. So, when we create awareness among this, then it becomes probably, I want it to be called as Hindu numbers. No, no, there is no concept of Arabic, right? For example, I get uh, some car from uh, Japan. For example, my uh, Apple uh, phone, maybe it is manufactured in China, but it is originated from uh, US. Do I call as uh, made in China US? No, right? So, it is ma manufactured in China, but it is fully attributed to US. Why Indian invention is uh, attributed to uh, Arabs? They are also saying they completely acknowledge it is from India. There is no reason to use Arabic at all. Okay. And second question for word Hindu, again there is a lot of controversy because Hindu is not a word given by ourselves. We never used Hindu. There is no proof. The earliest proof the, for the word Hindu comes in uh, Raja Tarangini, that is uh, uh, from uh, Kashmir history, where he uses Hindu, okay, but that is in 12th century. But I can show you in this slide also already there, the Christians were using uh, their book called Indo, the name of the book, uh, the, the Arabs write as Hind, book, al book of Hind. And when it is converted to Christians in 12th century, I am talking about, 12th century they are talking about Indo. So, the word India was also coming from 12th century, when the word Hindu, what proof we can give is also from 12th century, okay. So, Hindu is not a word from India at all, okay. See, my point was... No, no, I agree. So, we should use it, completely agree. My point was okay. to the extent. Sure. Uh, uh, I am little confused about the numbers here. Uh, 3rd century BC in one slide you mentioned is the origin, then you also mentioned the Brahmi script. And then we have the Rig Veda, yeah, it says 3rd century BC and the origin, the uh, first number, is that correct? How it uh, 3rd century BC is, we know Ashoka is 350 BC, right? That's right. why we write like that's this. That's why. Yeah. Okay. But 
If the Rig Veda is talking about 10 to the power of 19, obviously they were writing something or no? Or they were just See, talking? we, the problem is we have no records. See, we know the earliest records is in uh, uh, Indus Valley Civilization they have written. So, we know there was script. Okay, Indus Valley Civilization is also right now people have decoded it and they said it is basically Brahmi. Um, same similar like Brahmi is a local colloquial version of Sanskrit only. Yes. Because the word, for example, Vimshat, we see that is same as Vimshat today even in Sanskrit. Okay. That is in uh, Rugveda. But the problem is Rugveda is all words, right? There is no numbers. Hmm. So, we cannot say how Rugvedic people were writing unless otherwise we can decode Indus Valley Civilization and attribute something as numbers. The, again, whatever is decoded, they are all words, not numbers. You, you may get 20, but 20, how they were writing, we don't know. Okay. Okay. And uh, I think he has another question, I, I, because of the time limit, I skipped it, okay. about the cyclic nature. You asked an important question. See, is, uh, the, the, the point is, uh, they were using, they did not use this cyclic thing for numbers. Okay, numbers, normal people, I think I have explained it in slides also, normal people were using like other civilization only, they were using counting from 1 to 10 and they were all linear only. But some people started thinking about agriculture, they started looking at cyclic level and that is how even our uh, uh, astronomy developed and they developed for not from 1 to 10, it become it, because it was 15, so it is basically uh, base 15. Okay, so the, they were using from 1 to 15 and then when writing came, they wanted to harmonize, they applied the principle of that into the decimal system. So, that is how it became from, uh, the, actually if you see, the notations are there up to 15, not just 10. I have shown here 9 because they started mapping into the up to the 9 and then they went 0 as Kumb, Kumb I already explained. So, Kumb is basically full moon, the same notation they copied and that is how it became 1 to 10 and from 10 onwards it is a repetition because that is how we thought about its repetition, it is a cyclical thing and that is why we went into that algorithm, whatever we call as algorithm, our decimal calculation algorithm, for example, I add 8 plus something and then there is a carry over. So, that is an algorithm and that is invention of Indians, nobody else thought like that and all those things came because of our uh, uh, that uh, counting moon and then it, it also originated in developing calendar system and then calendar system is exactly 30 and then 30 repeats for example 12 months and then uh, although 365 days they know then the, for 5 days they were intercalate months, intercalate days they were adding and correcting it but it was cyclical. Okay. Maybe if, if you are not satisfied, I will answer it later. Uh, just one thing uh, on cyclical. Uh, uh, is uh, monsoon the reason on cyclical? Because I think only India is the country where monsoon is a yearly phenomenon for rain. I don't think it happens anywhere else. So maybe that can explain the cyclical part. The other thing is uh, in number system, like you said, uh, the number system, uh, place, place system. So is, does India have any other system like Num uh, second place after 9 or second place after 12, like we can have 12 different characters for 12 numbers and then repeat. That is so what I, that I, I understand, that is why I showed you, or 12 or no, none of it, none of the culture, none of the civilizations went for more than 10, they did not count 11 and 12 with different symbols. So, Mayans had number 13. No, no, 12, up to 12, see they were cutting at 5, see 5 there is a VCA symbol. Then we see a symbol that is very because you say 5 you become one uh, full hand so you get a symbol they were trying to consolidate again 10 they were consolidating okay they did not go because it was intuitive and natural that is why we came to see actually in our maths you do not have to do decimal only you can go for hexadecimal system hexadecimal is even more optimal actually but it is not intuitive it is very difficult for us to understand. If you go, we, our computers works with uh, bits of 8 and then 16, 16 bit, b, 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 digits. So, our computers actually work like hexadecimal and they, they say binary, but strictly speaking, when you go really design your chip, basically there is hexadecimal system. Hexadecimal is more optimal than <laughs> decimal, but we go for decimal because of our intuitive over at hands of 10. Okay, so, it is not just in India, as I said, Indians actually went up to 15. And then they adopted to 10 because normal people were using decimal system. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Right. But the Mayans actually had 13 as a base. So recently there was this argument about 
Yeah. Now Mayans went up to 20. I, I had a slide on that. Just recently we had this uh, thing that the year 2012 or something. That, yeah. that was 13 to the power 3. Okay. So as you told about the value place system, right? Value, yeah, that's oh, sorry, what I, place value. Place value system, no, no, no. that's what I explained. So huh? place value system, uh, you say, originated in India only. Okay, mm. that means first you count from uh, 1 to 10, mm. then treat 10 as a unit, mm. put it here, and then again you start counting from there. But treat it as a collection of 10 only, right? Correct. The unity should be considered a collection of 10. That means any number can be written as like in finite series, on left and right both. Because on left, so every place will be multiplied by 10. On right, every place will be divided by 10. Mm. Right? So it's like infinity, infinite series on both ways. Correct. Okay. So my main question is, in uh, European uh, mathematics, the historical development of that, this taming the infinity was uh, basically, you can say, uh, a very important movement to break into this modern mathematics of calculus. Right? So do you think that this conception of infinity and taming the infinity was already existing in India? Um, see, I see infinity bringing infinity into maths. They are disconnected. Actually, I showed you in concept of infinity is from religious background. Okay, from for Indians, it never came to um, thinking about maths to begin with. Okay, the problem is they uh, ended up explaining that because of the when they wanted to calculate the circle. Okay, they wanted to express the circle. And they, the way if you look at the history of how they cal came to pi, okay, they wanted a higher precision of pi and there they ended up with infinite series. Okay. So you can write go on infinite series to increase your precision. And in fact, uh, the concept of calculus came because of this infinite series. In fact, that's basically new, uh, uh, um, express it in uh, fractions. Uh. Yeah. And uh, the concept of calculus, like uh, I think if you look at uh, Professor uh, mm, yeah, Raju, you will understand it better. He explains it. There is a difference of infinity and infinity is really not required for our practical purposes, getting into the infinity. You can go for up to whatever is required, approximation, and that is good enough. One of your slides, you yeah. mentioned of, uh, some data from the Lalit Vistar, okay, yeah. the Buddhist text. Yes. So uh, the number goes up to uh, 10 to the power of something, I think, uh, 421. Yeah. The maximum mm. number goes up to that level. Yes. So see, this number is so big mm. that in modern science really doesn't care about this, mm. number, right? Mm. Modern science hardly go, up, you can say 10 to power 50 or something in 60s, right? When we talk about the size of the universe or even in the mole concept or Planck length. Okay, so on Planck length, you go to 10 to the power minus 34. Mm. Right? When talking about 10 to power uh, something like 420 mm. and still making some physical sense out of it, how is that? How is that possible? If you are not talking about infinity, no, it's the that's what I said. Actually, there is a story also in that uh, slide. How they were talking? Basically, it was in a discussion. It was challenged to explain why twenty to the power of twenty only. Okay, then they went into like our uh, yoga kind of thing, cycles and cycles. And when you explain cycle and cycle, it, it's uh, basically a multiplied. Okay, so t there is a ten to the power of twenty uh, such cycles of twenty cycles. Then it becomes 20 into 20, that's where you land up in 400. Okay, So there is an explanation of why there is a 20 cycles. And that's why 400 is coming. And moreover, all these things were uh, conceptual thing. There is no physical requirement. And they, there is nothing to uh, uh, correlate or explain what is 10 to the power of 400. Okay, so until they, they the things uh, evolved into the concept of maybe in my next talk, I will talk about it, like uh, distance between earth and sun. Okay, earth and sun are beyond some star, uh, what could be the distance when they are able to measure something concretely, they are able to get it into a bigger numbers. Uh, till that time, it's all conceptual. So they wanted to explain what is, for example, number of stars. What is the number of stars? Somebody ask and you are an intelligent guy, he will tell 10 to the power of 400. You go and count. <laughs> okay. No, I'm just uh, giving a simple reason. Yeah. So that is the, that is the concept of infinity, closer to infinity, that's all. Yes, sir, Even, yes, sir, by the way, the total number of particles in the universe, including photons, on scientific argument, they have calculated would be about 10 to the power 88. So anything beyond that just doesn't make sense. Mm. Okay, I'm coming to that. See, when we in mathematics and science, when we break this, uh, you know, normality and uh, enter into this the domain which is beyond our perception, metaphysics. Yeah, metaphysics. So I'm talking purely in terms of numbers. 
Okay, so as a physical human being, we can simply say 10 km, 20 km, 50 km. This distance can be simply measurable or in a way understood, right? But if somebody says 3 light years or 300 light years, certainly that is not, we are not able to uh, comprehend how big that distance is. But still, science talks about it. And it doesn't talk about in a very hollow manner, but very concrete evidences. Okay, and uh, when we, for example, when you talk about number of atoms in this mole or maybe 10 gram of iron, how many number of atoms are there? So we talk about 10 to the power 23 in terms of that, right? Again, the number of stars or number of galaxies. So number of galaxies are, are considered something around 10 to power 11. And in every galaxy, there are around 10 to the power 11 stars. Okay, so the proposed number is 10 to the power 22. Okay, maybe we can go beyond that. But but in, in tradition of science, there is always some, you know, some fundamental, uh, you know, rationality involved that why we are saying this. See, all these arguments are after 20th century. See, I am telling you, Europeans had a problem in uh, even adopting our Hindu system till 17th century. Okay. See, these people never even uh, till they adopt. If you use your Roman system, none of these maths is possible till 17th century. Forget about it. Okay. So Nothing is possible. Nothing is possible. Just you, unless other, you can count uh, and do some uh, normal... Um, uh, ever, uh, um, accounting systems, nothing else is possible, okay. All these talks, now it makes sense because we have evolved and science has advanced. And uh, I am talking about primitive people, bigger number uh, does not make sense. Yeah, last question, yeah. Sir, if you do not mind, yeah. in that book of numbers, and well, how do you make sense of that, the giant book which is known in numbers, you mentioned that book. Yes, yes. It is already decoded. I and, know. How, uh, do you, how do you make sense of those numbers? No, I, yeah, I, I mean, you just Google that uh, word, okay, that. Uh, what is the word, sir? Siri Bhuvalaya. Siri Bhuvalaya. Siri Bhuvalaya. These slides will be, I will be sharing with them. You can also get it. So, Siri Bhuvalaya, if you, if you Google it, you will get it, okay. So, the pages are also available. There are English books, Hindi, Hindi also it is written, Kannada it is written, but it is the Kannada book, okay. One unique, very unique book.